What is up, everybody? My name is Aaron. I am the Brick Scavenger, and I have gotten a ton of questions recently about my display stands, where I got them, how I made them, what they are, etc. So this is a little video to show you guys how I build my custom minifigure stands. Nothing real fancy about them. I'm not a master craftsman by any stretch of the imagination, but a couple things I like about these. First, they're fairly easy to make. I think you'll find today in this video that you could very easily do this yourself. But the second thing I really like about them is they don't stick out that far from the wall. They only stick out like half an inch from the wall. And so they don't take up much space in a room. You can basically mount them as if they were a picture frame, something like that. They work really well and you can customize the size of them very easily. So let's get to it. All right, guys, so just kind of a quick, what do I need to make this project happen list? Here's what I've got, very simple. These are 5 8 by 36 inch poplar squares. Uh, you can probably get these at any major home supply store. I got mine at Lowe's. I'm sure Home Depot has them as well. I would recommend that you get them as straight as possible. So you can just kind of look straight down them like this, rotate them a couple times, and just get the straightest ones possible. That one's got a little bit of a bow to it, but it gives you the right idea. Some of these are not gonna be in real good shape if you look for them at the store. Uh, so just make sure you're careful about which ones you get. Some black spray paint, some drywall screws, really any screws that will do that are just, you know, make sure they're longer, obviously, than the width of the, uh, of the square that you get. And then I got this mica tape. This is what allows the figs to stand up. It's an off-brand uh, Lego kind of product that's flexible sticker tape, very easily cut. It's a, like a rubbery material. It works really well, but I do think it's out of uh, production. So I used to get it at Walmart, but now uh, eBay may be your only source of it. It comes in a variety of colors. Some of it is actually road tape. It's got like the yellow, or I mean the uh, white mark on it there. I use black because I want... For my display, I want the Lego minifigure colors to really pop, so I don't use colorful tape, but it obviously exists in other colors if you wanna go that route. Uh, I was gonna film in the store to show you where I got this specifically in the store, but their music was so loud that I was fearing a copyright strike, as silly as that sounds, so I took a picture. So for five quick seconds on the screen, I'm just going to pop up where I found these in the uh, lows, if that's helpful. All right, guys, so I'm far from a master craftsman, as I mentioned before, but I did note that as I make these, this wood is pretty soft. And if you try to drill a screw through it without a pilot hole, it is, it is going to have a tendency to crack. So I've gonna put a pilot hole in an inch, inch and a half, something like that from the end. Nothing super fancy here. Just putting a little pilot hole in there so that the screw will go in nice and clean. Gotta make sure that the screw will go in without cracking the wood as we're mounting these things on the wall. I have no idea how bad the sound is on this, so if it's super loud drill, I apologize. Just like that. We'll do that same thing on the other side. All right, so this does kind of create a rough spot that you probably wanna get rid of, especially on the other side. So we're just gonna give these kind of a very quick sanding just to smooth them out a little bit. There's those right there. Flip them over, you can see maybe that is a little bit rougher. Flip this one over, sand this thing down just so that it's as smooth as possible. It looks as nice as possible. And we'll do that same thing on the other side as well. All right, again, nothing too fancy here. Just gonna spray paint these down. I'm using this uh, Fusion all-in-one satin black spray paint. Nothing fancy, no super fancy technique here. We're gonna do multiple coats. So I try to just kind of do a light coat first, just to kind of get some spray paint onto them. And we'll do, it'll probably, <clears throat> whoops, 
It'll probably be three coats, something like that. So the first one, just I kind of just get a light coat on there. We'll let that dry for an hour, something like that. Spray it down again. And then probably a third coat, something like that. All right, guys, spray paint complete. Several coats, looks great. Very excited to get this next step underway. I opened this mica tape. Again, I got this on kind of like eBay, uh, but I opened it off camera because this plastic is like that really hard plastic. If you're as old as me, you remember when uh, we used to get toys as a kid and it came in the hardest plastic in the world and opening it meant you needed like 17 stitches and three adults with sharp knives to try to open it. Just absolutely terrible. But anyway, it has been opened. This one that I have opened is Two, it's got double uh, layers. So I'm actually gonna cut right down the middle here so that I only need one set of studs to put onto the, uh, onto the piece of wood. That way I get you know sort of double the amount for my money. And so I'll cut this down the middle and then we'll do the next step. All right guys, now for the worst part of this whole thing. This part's terrible. The sticker tape that they put, the dog is gonna help apparently. The sticker tape that they put on the back of this is super duper cheap and it can be very hard to get off. So uh, be careful as you do this. But what I try to do is get this sticker tape off of here the best I can. I don't know if it's because it's old or cheap or what, but it's just a pain in the neck to get off of here. Once you get it started, it is very easy to break it and then have to get it started again. So that part's terrible, but I'm almost there. All right, there, you can kind of see I've got this started. I don't know if I've got the camera angle right. Uh, trying to leave obviously the adhesive part of the tape attached to the studs. The dog, the dog is playing with a chew toy back there if that's what you hear. You're not helping dog. Thank you very much, you are not helping. The life of, uh, the, life of the stay at home dad. All right, make sure, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm losing it here. Make sure that you don't put the stuff on the same, on the same side as the hole. It's gotta be on a non-hold side, okay? So make sure you do that. Can you guys hear the sticky, the, uh, Squeaky toy, I assume you can. Welcome to the life of a dad. Anyway, here we go, ready? That goes on like this. I just try to keep this as taut as possible as I go on here and slowly kind of work my way down. Again, nothing revolutionary here, but the tighter you keep this, thank you dog, give me that, give me that, give me that, give me that, get out of here. All right, that'll give us at least five seconds of time to do this. Oh, maybe less than five seconds. <laughs> this is how you play with the dog and build a Lego stand at the same time. Okay, so I don't know if you can see this, but we're just about ready to go. I put the tape on there. I pre-drilled these screws just a little bit because it's hard to do, uh, you know, while you're mounting it on the wall. So it's just kind of pre-drilled a little bit. I've got this pre-marked just to kind of save time on the video right? But I'm going to get this up there. I'm going to put one side in. Simple enough. I'm going to use my level just to make sure it's as level as possible to get the other side just where I want it. Right about there. Pop that in. And there you go. Just like that. That's how we make our minifig stands. This is really the Star Wars section. I don't have a bunch of Star Wars minifigs to put up there right now, but uh, you get the idea. We're gonna be putting these all over the room so that our Star Wars section can grow. I'm not sure what's gonna go over here, but we'll put some figs over here as well. We've got some CMFs right there. And then way over there, whoops, it's a little tippy with this tripod. Way over here, we have got a whole bunch more figs over here and over here. 
Maybe some wall space right here to put more figs. But again, I love this part of the display. It just doesn't take up that much space off the wall. So you're able to, you know, hang tons of them on the wall as if they were pictures effectively. It works great. All right, guys, that's it for me. That's how I make my minifigure display stands. I love them. I think they're great. I think they look sharp. Super easy to make. I'm not a master craftsman. And obviously, you guys could make these at home as well. Behind me is my Star Wars minifigure display. If you're interested in seeing any of these minifigures up close, I have a video on YouTube right now taking you for a full tour of the Star Wars display. So feel free to check it out. I'll put a link right here for you on that. And I will be making more videos on some of the tours of my other minifigure displays as well and the figs I have in my collection. So feel free to check those out as well. Again, thank you guys for joining me today. I hope you have a great rest of your day and happy building.